Hello and welcome back to A Slightly Twisted Female. I'm your host, Brittany Rue. Welcome to another chapter of Not Our Crimes, where we chronicle the crimes of trans identifying males, committing heinous crimes. So this article is from womenarehuman.com. Please check them out. They are a feminist publication, just like 4W just like several others and uh, we're going to look at the case of Christoph Johansson uh, aka Magdala Johansson. Uh, we'll get into what his crimes are specifically. They're heinous. Um, the whole the whole story is heinous and when you google this person's name the first hit comes up from this small feminist publication womenarehuman.com and I don't mean to say that it's small to, to disparage it it's because I know that anything that they've built every brick that they've created in their foundation of a publication they've had to put in themselves with no support these gender critical feminist uh websites i must be clear there's no such thing as gender supportive feminism that, that's an oxymoron anybody who supports the gender framework is inherently anti-woman so any true feminist publication is gender critical all true feminist publications are facing very severe censorship you know, we'll see pregnant women being sexually abused and used on Reddit. That's acceptable. You know, r slash pregnant porn or whatever it is. Um, you know, not safe for work. Ooh. And that's acceptable. But what's not acceptable is the, the claim that, that a woman is an adult human female. Well, that, whoa, that's going too far. So I just want to say shout out to um, womenarehuman.com and every other feminist publication who refuses to be silenced. Like I said before, we have to be our own source of news. So let's get into it. Let's keep exposing these motherfuckers for what they are. My mom, no, I'm a demon. It ain't nothing she could do but pray for me. It is posted November 14th of 2019. So it is a couple years old now. So it says, a weapons enthusiast who viciously murdered and dismembered his ex-girlfriend before feigning concern for her welfare during the search has now been granted a transfer to a woman's prison. Surprise, surprise. Oh, suddenly he's feeling dysphoric. Oh, wow. That's so great that you being arrested I guess, um, you know, you felt so empowered when you were mutilating the body of your young girlfriend that you just felt like, you know what, now's the time. I want to claim my true self and live in my truth. And, and I'm going to be the woman I've always felt that I am. Because I don't, I don't really know what the fuck that means to feel like a woman. If anybody can tell me what it means to feel like a woman, please let me know. Because the most female I've ever felt was um, pushing my children out of my vagina. The most female I've ever felt was going through hot flashes during menopause. The most female I've ever felt was during menstruation, during pregnancy. So may maybe that's what it means to be a female. But I'm pretty sure Mr. Kristoff has never experienced any of these things. Christopher Johansson, then age 23, stabbed to death 20-year-old civil engineering student. Of course, she's this beautiful, intelligent, hardworking. Uh, they, they, they hate women who can stand on their own two feet, who don't need them, who, who as soon as they start to see the red flags, want to separate themselves. Women, you know the most dangerous time for a woman is when she leaves an abusive man. And that's why I get really frustrated when people will attack women who stay in abusive relationships. Why? Because leaving is the most dangerous time. The year after leaving your abuser, you are your life is in the greatest risk. They don't take rejection well. So why do some people wait to leave? Maybe they're not ready. Maybe they haven't acquired the resources. And maybe no one takes them seriously. Okay, I know what it feels like to, to beg and plead for someone to recognize that you're not safe and you need help. And everyone's like, oh, well, you know, you got you too. You too just, just got to keep on working it out, you know. Okay. So if you don't understand how women get trapped, just shut the fuck up. Um, all right. So, oh, wow. So on May 2013, her name is, and, and I do not want to disrespect her by butchering her name, but I, so I might need some help from somebody who uh, speaks Swedish. Vatcheria Bangswan. 
and she looks either Asian or like very Eastern Russian. She's beautiful. Oh. So Christopher Johansson, then age 23, stabbed to death 20-year-old civil engineering student Vacharia Bangswan, his former girlfriend, in May 2013. He chopped up her body and scattered the parts throughout a forest and desert farm. He also slaughtered and chopped up his dog. These are the worst of the worst. These are not benign men asking to transfer. None of the men who ask to transfer into women's prison are, are benign. Why? Because I think reasonable men, even ones who are trans identifying, respect why women would be uncomfortable being housed with a male. And a reasonable person would feel so out of place knowing that he's making everybody feel so uncomfortable, knowing that he's transgressing against everybody's boundaries. A reasonable person wouldn't even ask, would just set up a situation in his own rightful place and, and try to work with what he has. These are the worst of the worst. They do not respect other people's boundaries. They do not respect the humanity and dignity of anyone else but themselves. A massive search joined by the military and organization Missing People was launched when the young woman was reported missing following her jogging trip near Bowdoin. Mr. Johansson appeared to be worried for his ex and then assisted in the search effort. Hmm. However, evidence including traces of blood in his car soon caused investigators suspicion to fall on Mr. Johansson. Witnesses said they had last seen the missing woman when Mr. Johansson picked her up by car outside of her apartment. Under interrogation, Mr. Johansson admitted that he had recently visited a cabin where the deceased woman's body parts were subsequently found. Oh, oh you guys are going to love this part. Uh, Mr. Johansson was sentenced to 14 years in prison. On appeal, the conviction was changed to manslaughter and the sentence was reduced to 10 years. My very close friend spent 10 years in federal prison for stealing a luxury vehicle for carjacking. So the life of this woman is equal in value to the car that my friend unsuccessfully stole. The original owner still owns the car or, or got to keep the car. He, he was unsuccessful. He was caught pretty quickly. So this woman's life was destroyed, can never be taken back. He succeeded in destroying her life. And his sentence is equivalent to the sentence that my friend received for stealing a car. This beautiful, intelligent, gorgeous, and when I say beautiful, okay, I'm not just, I'm not talking about physically beautiful. She is physically beautiful, but I mean holistically beautiful, spiritually beautiful, valuable worthy, important. Her life mattered. And it was snuffed out by some sick piece of shit who managed to make his entire sentence about his own narcissism. And we acquiesced. Her life was equal to a car. Put your fucking feet. Put your foot on the necks of every single legislator that has any say in the decisions that go into placing these predators with women. Keep your foot on their neck. Do not back down. It is 2022. It is time to come forward. It is time to drop the anonymity. It is time to get real fucking serious. Because this is getting out of control. And I've had enough. Mr. Johansson was for sentenced to 14 years in prison. On appeal, the conviction was changed to manslaughter and the sentence was reduced to 10 years. 10 years for destroying her life. 
He was housed in a safety class one men's prison, which provides the highest degree of security available for offenders categorized as the most dangerous. In a risk profile, prison officials judged Mr. Johansson to be violent, noting his, quote, interest in weapons, warfare, and explosive, his personality functioning with a lack of emotional resources, inflexible thought patterns, a vulnerability to stress, and difficulty in social interaction. End quote. Prior to prison, the young man had belonged to a group that met in the forest and simulated military actions, a paramilitary training group that's illegal, at least in the United States. However, when Mr. Johansson appeared, in autumn in, uh, appeared last autumn in Swedish TV's documentary, In the Head of a Killer, he insisted that other male inmates were a danger to him. He claimed the inmates subjected him to sexual harassment and he was in fear of them. But you presented as a man on the street. So why did you need to present as a woman in prison? If that was getting you sexually harassed, drop the act. Just chill. Or maybe that wasn't actually the case. Maybe this is all, oh, because you know, huh. oh. Dangerous murderers are manipulative? What? Like, please, my God. Uh, the documentary additionally revealed that Mr. Johansson intended to apply for transfer to women's prison. The transfer request was initially denied, but a new application submitted October 18th was granted last week. On Monday, Mr. Johansson was transferred to Heinsberg, Sweden's largest women's prison, which is a safety class too. Oh, he even got to get degraded in safety. He's got more freedom. Oh, how nice for him. The highest available for women's prisons. Oh, see, women's prisons only go up to two, not even one. And it says, women's prisons have a far lower rate of violence than men's. I wonder why. Because most of the women housed there are housed there for non-violent offenses. Women have lower rates of violence in general. The documentary additionally revealed that Mr. Johansson intended to apply for transfer to a woman's prison. The transfer request was initially denied, but new application submitted October 18th was granted last week. I'm, quote, I'm not a psychologist, but I get the feeling that she has found herself, lawyer Jan Cairo said about his client, Mr. Johansson. She thrives in that role. She is an excellent martyr. She is the best goddamn bleeding heart victim I have ever represented. And I, it is an honor to serve this psychopath as he successfully manipulates everybody who gets in his way. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I bet. <laughs> like, she's really found herself. When she got to prison, and she, she saw that 10 to 14 years. Oh, my goodness. And then she just, and then I was going over some, you know, just technical stuff with her. And I mentioned that if she has, you know, some kind of gender dysphoria, that they would send her over to the, uh, the women's prison. And that it's a lower safety class, too. And there's more freedom. They get to walk around and be around all the, the females. And then, yeah, I realized, well, what do you know? <laughs> well, she came back for and she said, well, you know what? I'm feeling a little dysphoric. And I said, well, by golly, <laughs> let's start the paperwork. Sinada's Amadi says... We can no longer coddle men's emotions. Christopher Johansson raped, smeared his sperm on his victim, murdered, and butchered her. Then feigned concern and joined the search party for her body. There, it, that, that right there, that alone, if that doesn't tell you how sinister this person is, the utter lack of remorse, the capacity to, 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 to pretend to search and to join a search party to search for the woman that he killed. It's an account with the username... Magdala Johansson and a photograph of Mr. Johansson contains a description turf hunter in the bio. Turf is a slur used by transgender activists against women who do not believe humans can transition from one sex to another. This is what women are human instead. Quote, turfs hate and spread s shit about me because I am the first to transition in a Swedish prison and also the first trans woman to move from male to female prison ever in Sweden, the account holder claimed. The user shared several photos of a woman he referred to as, quote, one of the turfs that are stalking me. And he said, quote, turf is a slur to silence you? Damn, I wish it worked. Shut the fuck up, said a meme posted by the account. Quote, to all the turfers out there, we are here to stay no matter what you do, end quote. The status accompanying the meme reads, the oath was followed by three pump fists. Can you imagine? Let's just stop for a second. 
how how much this must have radicalized this man so so he already went in you know hating women and feeling like he was so entitled to a, a woman's body and so entitled to do what he wanted that he could end somebody's life for for whatever reason that he deemed necessary that was not in self-defense dismember her body hack it up destroy it mutilate it rip her flesh and, and to like and think about it, to really like to cut up someone's body is in, intense you need like a saw you need to really like it, and and I, and I mentioned that not to be gruesome and gory but the level of intention that comes with dismembering somebody's body and then driving it and flinging the pieces out into the woods is so calculated it is so intentional it is so much effort much so much conscious decision making that has to go into that okay so he went and then and then the ultimate sort of rape the ultimate disrespect is smear semen all over her it's almost like a, a conquest flag like you know and and fuck you and as a male i have dominated you throw her body out into the woods and then join the search party as if he's concerned. This is, this is a psychopath. And then what does the government tell him? Not only are we going to spit on her grave with you and smear our own semen on her with you, metaphorically speaking, by giving you 10 years in prison, but we're gonna give it as like a timeout. Go ahead, sit down, go, 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 you know, I listen, okay? You went a little too far with killing her. And, and, and you know, you, you made it tough for us. We, we got, we gotta sit you down. Sit down for a little bit. You know, we'll send you into it, you know, we'll let you transfer in with the females and uh, you know, we'll get you out of here in no time, bud. Get you out of here in no time. So, what that did to this male was, was radicalize him, really, because now he understands that he's truly untouchable. The government values women's lives so low, low as a car, as low as a carjacking. They are so worthless in the eyes of the government that he can mutilate, kill. There is literally nothing worse. He's proven he can do the worst of the worst. He can do the most harm, and he will get a slap on the wrist, so he came out and became very radicalized. And not only that, but he's given all these accommodations to of self-discovery and let me find me and let me, you know, figure out who I am inside, right? Now he knows, and this is so much of just, I think even just taking on the persona of a woman is now I own you. I have fully transitioned into colonizer. I own your body. I threw you out with, like trash and I took over your female experience. It's mine now. And I will use it to my benefit. I will use it for my own gain. And I will have everybody on my side. And anybody who speaks out will get censored and get in trouble. They will seek more backlash from the public than I did for killing you. I'm untouchable. And that's what he's thinking. So he comes out and he starts having these super aggressive vitriolic rhetoric aimed at so-called transit trans exclusionary radical feminists and he goes after terse and he's not talking about and again whenever we talk about oh you know the these trans women are, are just they just want to be safe and they're being victimized and they're they're afraid of men no they're not no they're not because all of their vitriol all of their anger all their hatred really seems to be reserved for trans exclusionary radical feminists for women for women who dare to speak up and say, I don't feel comfortable having males in vulnerable female spaces. That's who gets their wrath. Not the men who are raping and killing them. No, no. Because also the fact it remains is that that really isn't a problem. They're not dying. There's no, there's no genocide. There's no Holocaust. Like they've claimed because they do sex work. That's why, you know, they're experiencing high rates of violence that is consistent with sex work and with risky sexual. So then he comes out. Oh, and by the way, he was eligible for parole as early as. Let's see. He must have made parole. Oh, I guess he did. 
Oh, wow. Did he only spend six years? Holy shit. Okay, so he came out. He was eligible for parole um, on... Jan okay, he was eligible on parole for January 24th of 2020. He must have made it. That was only six years. Okay, he committed this heinous crime in 2013, was paroled out in 2020. And immediately, he wastes no time. So they, they did like a, a show up a true crime episode on him and they made sure to interview him, give him some spotlight. He's, he comes out, he's a celebrity. And now he's getting all this more attention because he transitioned and everyone wants to hear his story and he's telling his story and guess what he doesn't mention? He doesn't speak of, of his crime. He doesn't speak of his victim. People almost forget what he is. It's almost like they're treating him like he's some kind of a hero. Oh, you, oh, you go girl. <laughs> Live your truth. So stunning. So brave. Oh, look. He slaughtered a woman, a 20 year old, bright, a worthy human being, mutilated her body and threw her out like trash. There's nothing brave, there's nothing stunning. This is the worst sort of depraved monster. So he immediately gets out, is offered these interviews and ah, uh, and then he, there's a bunch of, um, and it has to be him, you know, there's a bunch of accounts that pop up under the name of Magdala Johansson and that feature his photos. And it's, you know, him holding weapons and he's got long hair and he's wearing a bra. And when he talked about one of the first things that he did uh, when he got out was buy a bra. Uh, on an account of Instagram with the username Magdala Johansson and a photograph of Mr. Johansson contains a description turf hunter in the bio. Uh, I had posted this from the, uh, a tweet that I'd seen from this Avery Edison freak. Some blue check on Twitter. I don't know who the fuck he is, but if you, any of you guys know. And he said, trans people using violent language or in imagery in response to turf. Parentheses, trans exclusionary radical feminist. Rhetoric is not a threat or an intimidation tactic. It's a reminder to scare trans people that we are strong and we will not allow hate to overpower us. Do you hear like the manipulative language? We will not allow hate to overpower us. They are taking women's language, women's rhetoric. Our fear is being overpowered by men. We use the term overpower. That's intentional. Invoking female language and now saying that, that, that our words are, are literal violence and they are afraid and so they need to say things like they're gonna rape and kill us to empower them so that they won't be overpowered by, by women, by activists, by women who, who wanna protect themselves and their children. This is so, it, it's so manipulative, it's so narcissistic, it's so self-involved. Then he said, yeah, it's a bit shocking to see trans women carrying bats and wearing shirts with fake turf blood on them. <laughs> but that's the point, <laughs> it's an extreme, but proportionate response to the actual physical harm transphobic are doing to the trans community. Okay, no. Guess how many transphobic hate crimes led to trans deaths in 2021? <laughs> Not sure. What do, you, what do you think? Ballpark it. The answer is one. There was one hate crime murder against a transgender person in the entire year of 2021. In the US? No, globally. One person on the face of the entire earth out of, what are we at now? Like Nine billion people? Something like that. Was killed for being transgender in 2021. And it is in the Philippines, which is a very bizarre, strictly Catholic country. I used to work there. I was a midwife there. One person, and it wasn't a trans woman. It was a trans man. As we know, there is higher rates of violence against trans-identified females than there are trans-identified males. What's happening is these men are getting messages that there is a loophole around societal disgust with male violence against women. 
that there is a loophole that claiming to be a woman, you can now pursue any level of violence against women. You'll get a slap on the wrist. You will be exalted as brave, as stunning, as heroic. You'll become in the public eye. And it's something of a narcissist and an abuser who likes to nitpick and control little things. Because in an abuser, if he can get you to concede on small things, make small changes. Well, I don't like you wearing your hair up all the time. Let it down. I want you to wear your hair down when we go out from now on. And you're like, oh, oh, okay, uh, yeah. And then you're like, yeah, he just, he loves it when I wear my hair down. And he sees he can get you to comply. Get that, take that makeup off. I don't like it like that. Just, just a little something light. And you're like, oh, okay, um, okay. Men who are abusive or narcissists, they revel in getting small concessions because the little concessions mean that they can work towards larger concessions. That's why getting the transfer, all it did was reaffirm and, and reestablish to him he is in control. He can get even the prison to acquiesce to his requests. He can get the government to acquiesce to his requests. Oh, he's in control now. He knows it, he feels it, he knows he's in power. He knows if he just settles down for a couple of years, he comes out. Now he comes out and he is mega emboldened. He spent all of that time focusing on himself with the help of the state and now, now he is fully emboldened. There is nothing holding him back. He has done the worst that you can do. He has dismembered and mutilated a woman. And he barely got a slap on the wrist. Oh, there's nothing stopping him. Those threats that he's making? No, Mr. Avery. No, those aren't just, you know, trying to feel good and trying to feel powerful. He knows he absolutely can get away with it. He's already experienced that. There is Nothing too violent, nothing too obscene that he will ever be held accountable for. I'm going to read just one last source about him. So this is from an actual Swedish newspaper. Let's just see how they treat his crime. It says, after cutting of the X, now she tells her story. So they're respecting the pronouns. We see Sweden still, still respects the pronouns. So first he went by Kim Marie Johansson. And then he switched to Magdala. And that's one thing that you'll see. They'll keep changing their names, playing with their aliases, seeing what works. If they make a mess of one, then they just change it again. And these are like shapeshifters. Kim Marie Johansson killed and dismembered her ex-girlfriend in Bowdoin in 2013. And I'm going to switch it to male pronouns because pronouns are rohypnol. When he was convicted, his name was Christopher. In prison, he undergoes a gender correction. Oh, so... What does that mean? Was he given some kind of uh, state paid for surgery? Probably. From within his cell, he now wants to give his untold story about life before he killed the ex Vacheria Bangswan. And I, I hate that I even have to attach her to him in this story after her death. She's more than his victim. When I read the text, everything felt completely right and I finally know why I felt the way I did, writes Kim Marie Johansson. First, two bones were found in a yellow, desolate house. Two days later, a new find was made in the forest. In a pit lay a naked body from a woman with dark hair that reached down over her shoulders. The body was covered with tree trunks and six stones of different sizes. Both finds were part of Vetshreya Bankswan. Two weeks earlier, the 20-year-old had disappeared without a trace during a jogging trip in Bowdoin. Her ex-boyfriend, who was then named Christopher Johansson and was 22 years old, was sentenced for her refusal, for his refusal in the district court to 14 years in prison for having murdered and dismembered Vacheria Bungswan. In the Court of Appeal, it was changed to 10 years in prison for murder. Both Johansson and the Court of Appeal agreed that Johansson dissected the woman. <laughs> oh, well, we can all agree that he, he did hack her to bits and, and brutally murder her where we've got a bone to pick is the 14 i mean uh, do we gotta give him 14 we're gonna whittle it down we're gonna call it an even 10 call it an even 10 let him sit down for a little bit you know 
we learn his lesson. We're confident. Huh? Ah. Both Johansson and the Court of Appeal agree that Johansson dissected the woman. Oh, 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 so he even admitted it. Oh, 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 oh. So everybody's just, oh, no, no, no. That We all agree. We all, we know that he did it. That's not what's up in the air. It's how much time does this man have to serve? I mean, we can't just take his life from him. You know? <laughs> I mean, come on. Fucking Christ. Uh, da -da -da. Her ex-boyfriend was then named Christopher Johansson. Okay. Today, Johansson is 27 years old and has changed his name to Kim Marie and started a gender correction. Oh, so he is getting surgery in jail. Oh, excellent. Okay. So basically, hey, you know, spend 10 years, work on yourself, you know, kind of get some new, like, cities and all kinds of fun new things. Paper by the state. It's like a spa. Who wouldn't want to go? Hell, I'll just keep hacking people up if I get this sort of treatment every time, you know what I mean? No, this is the message that we're sending him. We're, we're telling him that it doesn't fucking matter, that, that you can just hack up women and, and you'll get rewarded for it. Because these are all rewards. I see no no punishment. What punishment? Huh? He, he gets to be in a sea of women who we would have never had access to. He's ugly as shit. And, and get a bunch of free surgery and a newfound sense of entitlement. Yeah, good fucking job, Sweden. This, this has to stop. I'm fine, writes Kim Marie Johansson in a letter to Express In. Last Thursday, I was on leave when I was buying a new bra and ate at Frass's. Oh, well, look at you, sir. You buying a new bra, checking them out, feeling good. Like, it's, it's, we're in a parallel universe. This is, this is, this is, it's so horrifying. It's like, a, it's like a bad comedy. It's, it's so horrifying. It's almost funny, but then you realize that it's real and that it's like horrifying, twice as horrifying. And sickening. I can't. I'm trying on a new bra on Ada Frass is, oh, well, good for you. And I had just come out of a 14-month rape on isolation. And I'm now sitting in a ward with two others admitted, which is fun. You have to be happy for the little things. Oh, oh, look at him, you know. Look at him. He's finding happiness and joy and light in his day. It sounds, you know, and I heard, aren't Swedish prisons, like, like real fucking comfortable, too? Yeah, no, he's doing great, putting on weight, you know, working out, making friends. This isn't, he, look, he's wearing, like, normal street clothes. What the fuck? Yo, we hate women. And the crazy thing is, too, and it's like, you know, when, when men are like, oh, you know, women hate men. No, no, no. When women hate men, talk about hating men, women's hate for men is we hate the way you beat the shit out of us, kill us, and rape us. The way that men hate women is to beat the shit out of us, kill us, and rape us. Us hating men is just complaining about it. Who really hates who? In a text that Kim Marie Johansson sent to express him from inside, I am not going to fucking pronounce that word. Uh, holy shit, I'll put it up on the screen, and if somebody can pronounce it for me, please let me know. She, he gives his untold story. The text, which he calls an autobiographical short story, is on five computer-written A4 pages. Oh, he's just, like, on the computer. He's got, like, all kinds of amenities. Sounds great. Uh, oops. There he talks about his personality transformation before he killed and dismembered Vecheria Bankswan. Oh, they just, like, mention it, like, before he just, you know, killed and dismembered th this woman. But, you know, she's an after, she's just an afterthought. That's that's old news. You know, we don't, we don't give a shit. It, it makes me want to fucking throw up. It really, it breaks my heart. Like, I know I'm, like, joking about it. It really fucking breaks my heart. I, we hate women. We do. Uh... In a comment, Kimberly Johansson explains why he wrote the short story. I wrote the short story because a person close to me warned me that I was not the easiest to get grow up with, he writes. Kimberly Johansson believes that his upbringing as a, quote, LGBTQ person in Norboten in the 90s and 00s is the basis for how he became. Again, <laughs> all of these men are making no attempt to transition until they get to prison. Oh, great. No, this is great. I, now I can get a bunch of free surgery. You know, I can get, like, news stories. I mean, my life has gone up since since I hacked her up. That's really what's going on. He continues. Hen also didn't know what I was exposed to, which in turn made it difficult for me to grow up with. After the short story was finished, I felt that others who grew up in a similar situation 
can find support by reading my story. No, nobody will ever find support. You're fucking weird. That is why I want to share the short, short story with others. Nobody gives a fuck about you or your fucking weirdo story. Go to hell. Sorry, I'm just like, I'm, my, my patience is shot. Express it now chooses to publish parts of... Oh, of course, a big, big uh, publication chooses to publish it. That's great. Marie Johansson's text about his life before he killed and dismembered his ex girlfriend They keep saying it like this. Before he killed and dismembered his ex-girlfriend, Vacheria Bank Swan. Quote, I was five years old when I realized I was different. I went, When I went to kindergarten, I was always forced by the kindergarten girls to stand with the boys when we were going on excursions to the forest which I thought was strange because I myself felt I should stand with the girls. I do not know what it is like to feel like a girl, but I was a girl. I wanted to stand with the girls, but they did not like me because I was creepy and did weird stuff and they did not accept me. So I was angry and I came back and I killed them. It took me several years before I realized why I was the way I was and felt the way I felt. It wasn't until I got to prison. He didn't say that, but... It pretty much was until he got to prison. Throughout my upbringing, it felt like I was socially forced to participate in sports I did not like. Sports such as football, bandy, what the fuck is bandy? Ice hockey, wrestling, fencing, basketball, and handball. The only sport I really liked was archery because their boys and girls could train together. Are you telling me that you guys had him playing sports? That he didn't want to play? You made him get out there and play bandy. You had him playing bandy. Oh, no wonder. No wonder. Like, what? Okay, we don't give a fuck that you, like, didn't want to play sports and, like, had to play sports. Like, yo, this is the narcissism, the mindless self-indulgence, self-absorption. Holy fucking shit. It never ceases to amaze. It was not that I really disliked the other sports per se, but rather that I was always forced to train and compete with girls and against guys. Oh, with and against guys. I wanted to touch the little girls and I could not do so. And I was angry because I didn't get my way when I wanted to. When I was 13 years old, I finally found out, I found out why I felt the way I did. At the beginning of the school term, when I was in grade 7, I was slipping through my new biology book. Kids, hi. Um, I know you might not know what a biology book is. It's kind of like an old-fashioned thing <laughs> that has been unfortunately made obsolete uh, by the current woke standards. So you might not know what that is if you're unsure Call up grandma and grandpa. They might be able to clue you in after Brett. But, you know, make sure you're wearing, like, your helmet and have, like, Karen from your kid might always says, get your smell and salts, kids, because you might get really offended and be prepared to lay down after grandma and grandpa explain what a biology book is. After browsing for a while, I came to the chapter, Sexual Knowledge, and I started reading. Kim Marie Johansson writes that he lost his virginity to an older girl. He continued, oh, so he's, the yeah, like I said, definitely AGP, which is, he's an autogonophile. Those are the most dangerous. They're, they're all bad. They're all misogynists. Um, but there's homosexual transsexuals, and then there's AGPs. And all, most of these freak shows who are doing, like, the worst of the worst things to women, these are heterosexual men who are sexually turned on by the idea of, like, fucking themselves as a woman. So, like, they want to, like objectify themselves it, it's so fucking it's just fucked and it's it's scary and these are usually the ones who are committing the most heinous crimes against women uh ray blanchard was the first to describe agp autogynophilia and there's different subsections of gyne- autogynophilia um i'll get into all of those in, in a different video but you know there's some that's like the um ones that have like the biological who are really into like the biological processes like menstruation breastfeeding you know the there's it, it's different from um fetishistic trans uh transvestism which is just heterosexual men who like to dress up in women's clothing but they don't I, they're not turned on by actually being a woman agp is like wanting to be in the skin of a woman and, and they're sexually turned on by it. this is a fetish uh so all of this is larping living out his role play kim johansson writes that he lost his virginity to an older girl and he continues I, according to the book they spent i was bisexual huh what do you mean according to the book this is bisexual 
Oh, 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 because he thought he was a girl. I get it. He's a heterosexual. I read on and found out a piece about transsexuality. When I read the text, everything felt completely right. And I, I finally knew why I felt the way that I did. But I, I later realized one important thing. That no one ever got to know what I was. I wanted everybody to know. One day they would. One day they would. <laughs> Not telling about her orientation also motivates Kim Marie Johansson by writing that an important person for her should have described transsexuals as, quote, mentally unstable. And for the record, I'm reading a translated transcript of this Swedish article, so some of the translations, like, doesn't make sense. So if it doesn't make sense, that's why. He continues, I knew I was a woman. I was not locked up. However, I understood that I would probably be best to shut up about what I feel, as I did not want to be even more bullied than I already was. You were bullied because you were a fucking psychopath. You were a psych... The, the mental illness precluded, predated the, the, the transsexualism, transgenderism. You were mentally ill. That's what they identified in you. Not about you being transsexuals. You, maybe, yeah, maybe you being AGP because you were a mentally ill fetishist. The years in high school only got worse and worse and as puberty misdirected my physical development and I got a deeper voice and body hair on my face. I was frozen out by my old classmates and in eighth grade I was diagnosed with autism and ADD. Well, there you have it, folks. There is a huge correlation between autism and, and gender dysphoria. And, and that is, listen, autistic brains, we need autistic brains. Autistic brains are gorgeous. They're, they're, they're a variation of normal. We, we need them. I truly believe, I believe that they're just a brain minority type, but they are unfortunately very prone to these transsexualism and AGP and, and for a lot of females, the gender dysphoria. So yeah, that, make, that makes a lot of sense. I'm not reading the rest of this bullshit. It fucking goes on and on. I don't give a fuck. Sorry about being with an alcoholic, but this, this is the scumbaggery that we're getting into. Oh, uh, wait, now we do get, need to get into this real quick because he talks about his abuse. Kim Marie Johansson writes that he came out as bisexual in 2007. So having sex with a woman made you bisexual, sir? What the fuck are you talking about? Pretty sure that that would make you heterosexual unless you're also having sex with men. But you haven't discussed that here. Uh, okay. So I guess you like men and women. Interesting. Um, okay, the high school was tough. Da -da -da, started going more downhill. Dropping out of children and leisure program. Ba -ba -da -ba, started spending time with an alcoholic. Weird. And then, oh, okay, it says, all right. I started dropping out of the children and leisure program and since spent a lot of time of my time with an alcoholic, writes Kim Marie Johansson. She also, he also writes that he, quote, let a person rape him. So he let someone rape him. It just reminds me of the, uh, the woman who was talking about he, she like staged a rape on herself to like heal herself. Oh God. Um, I did everything to alleviate all the anxiety I felt, writes Kim Marie Johansson. Kim Marie Johansson writes that when he started at a boarding school in whatever that word is, somewhere in Sweden, for people with neuropsychiatric disabilities, he, quote, found his community with his new classmates. Oh, so he was in a boarding school for people with neuropsychiatric disabilities. So he was in, like, a psychiatric, like, inpatient schooling system. Quote, but the semester after that, my life became shit again, writes Kim Marie Johansson, later and describes a rape that he claims to have been subjected to. After that, the situation got worse. Kim Marie Johansson writes further and tells about self-harming behavior and drug abuse. When he, then 17 years old, left school, he writes, once I got home to boarding again, I tried to move on with my life, with my experience forever in the back of my mind. I took my driver's license in one and a half months and I brought my first car. I reconnected with old friends from primary school and I resumed my airsoft interest in earnest again. Oh, so he's got like all into like guns and like airsoft guns and weird shit. Okay. So yeah, he's like into these guns and says airsoft. He definitely graduated to real, real, uh, real guns later on, which listen, I love guns, but this guy's a freak. Um, started going to parties and clubs with his friends, had a functioning private life. Yeah, the, 
everything seemed to roll on between the years of 2009 and 2012. But when I turned 21 years old, my old experiences had started to remind me again. I started having nightmares and I had to lose. Okay. No, no, no. So he's talking about basically saying how he started drinking and his old PTSD because he was raped. Oh, get the fuck out of here. Okay. Women are raped all over the planet every day. I, I, I bet you the vast majority of women listening to this right now have been sexually assaulted and sexually abused. I guess what the fuck we're not doing. <laughs> we're not hacking y'all the fuck up, throwing you guys in the woods. And for the record, all those rapes, all those assaults, not one of those was by a woman. They were all men who raped you. <sighs> no. Sir, no, none of this explains anything. You are useless. You are just a piece of human pile of dog shit. You are dog shit, sir. Sweden, you are dog shit for letting this piece of filth infect society yet again. He, oh, and then it talks about how he writes about you get as a dog. I got a dog, but then I fucking murdered it later because I'm a freak show. Uh, and then he killed and dismembered it. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. After that incident, everything in my life felt empty, empty and lifeless. After I guess he murdered... Oh, no. It says she did not... Oh. Oh, oh. She, she... He said... Okay, after the dog died. So he claims that he didn't kill the dog. So there's... Well, the police said that he killed the dog. He said, no, I didn't kill the dog. It got electrocuted or some weird shit. It bit like an electric cable and got electric... Yeah, dogs... Dogs do that. And they said, after that incident, the dog dying, everything in my life felt emptily and, empty and lifeless. It says, he does not mention the details of Vacheria Bung Swan's death or that he has been sentenced to 10 years in prison for a murder and breach of peace after cutting her body. Yeah. All right, and this, this is going to disgust you. You ready for the great grand finale of this piece of shit's bullshit memoir? It says, my alcohol problem got worse and worse. I felt like I was standing on a ledge and balancing on the edge. I do not know what kept me above the abyss. Maybe it was my family or my friend's love, question mark. Maybe it was Vacheria's death and my later arrest. Maybe it was simply a coincidence that I would live instead of die. A philosopher probably knows the answers to these questions, but I myself have no idea. One thing I do know is that today I can finally live openly as the woman I actually am. I am now 27 years old and my life, my real life, has just begun. I'm going to read that again. He said, A philosopher probably knows the answers to these questions. But I myself have no idea. One thing I do know is that today I can finally live openly as the woman I actually am. I am now 27 years old and my life, my real life, has just begun. This is a male who slaughtered a young woman at the age of 20 like a pig on an animal farm, cut her body into pieces, threw her out in the middle of the woods, went to prison for six years, was housed amongst women, given transgender surgeries or, or, or hormones or some sort of medicalization and came out and says that he feels rejuvenated and he's ready to begin living his brand new life. He was rewarded. He was rewarded. He is still threatening women and it is permitted. If you are not angry, if you are not piqued, you need to figure out what is wrong with you. And in the meantime, stay away from women. <laughs>